Hey people, what's going on? It's Jamil. And I'll, a lot of people watch my videos and I, I, I can't help but notice that other people would have to notice that I use Muhammad Ali a lot in a lot of my videos. And I've said this a few times already, but there's an interesting story behind that. Uh, I live in, in Norton Shores, Michigan. Then next to me there's Muskegon Heights, Michigan. Then Muskegon, Michigan. Then there's Roosevelt Park. It's a series of cities. Just like in Los Angeles, you, you would have, you know, uh, uh, you know, you'd have Inglewood, you would have Lenox, you would have Hawthorne, um, you would have South, the South Central region, and within the South Central region, you know, you have Bellflower, you have different areas, but you Beverly Hills, Santa Monica, you go on different a series of cities. So that's where I live as a series of cities, like you have Fruitport over here, all these places. Anyhow, I met Muhammad Ali when I was about seven years old in Muskegon Heights, Michigan. There's a street called Broadway where there's a big tower, right, a bell, a uh, clock tower, clock tower right there. And it's still there, but I, I saw Muhammad Ali, and he was so big. You know, I'm, I'm a little seven years old. I'm a little boy. I'm a child. And he was so big, and he had all these guys around him in trench coats. And I remember the older people were talking. And now me, I'm mixed. I'm black and white. And so throughout my life, I've been able to, to mingle in to the black crowd and experience things, then mingle into the white crowd and experience things, then mingle in, because of how I look, I can get in around, especially I cut my hair low, I get in around Hispanics, I can get in around Middle Eastern people, because of how I look. It's, and I noticed that when I, when I went trip, when I left the country a couple times, especially when I went to Thailand, I noticed a lot of the Middle Eastern people and a lot of different races around the world, I can just sort of blend in. <sighs> Anyhow, so I'm, I'm seeing Muhammad Ali, and he got these guys around him in trench coats, and they're bodyguards. I think, you know, the Nation of Islam, or maybe it might not have been. A, I think, but no, this was in the early 90s, and I think by then he had um, disassociated himself with the Nation of Islam. I think in the 80s he had uh, converted to, to um, a, a more mainstream version of Islam. You know, Nation of Islam is like the whole Malcolm X 60s thing, 60s, 70s. Anyhow, so I see him, and I walk up to him, I try to shake his hand, and he gives me a hug. And at the time, it was just a hug. and I felt his weight. He was a bigger guy, so I felt his weight. And at that point, I was like, okay, I met Muhammad Ali, I got a hug from him. Now, th this many years later, when I'm going through the gang stalking thing, I'm figuring out how I'm going to be able to get through this, right? And the first thing that came to my mind, I don't know why it happened, it was Muhammad Ali. And I said, why am I thinking about Muhammad Ali so much? I don't really know very much about Muhammad Ali. I know I met him, but why am I thinking? You know, he was way before my time. I was born in 85. So, anyhow, I start, I start looking at this little computer I got. I start looking at uh, videos of Muhammad Ali. And I noticed that, well, Muhammad Ali was around the same era as my research, the 60s and 70s. And so, you know, and so I started listening to him talk. And I'm like, wow, man, this guy, you know, he, he uh, you know, he, he's all there. Like, he knows what he's talking. Like, he, he's predicting what rounds he's going to beat people and everything. And so uh, then I see he's not really winning these fights just because He's so fast and so strong. He is very fast and he is strong, but he was able to beat people way stronger than him. And he's doing this. I realized he's not doing this just because of his athletic ability. He's doing this because he has limited doubt. He doesn't have, he, he, he has very little doubt, almost no doubt that he will win the fight. And so I see him winning these fights, Right? And I'm like, this is fascinating, man. This guy, you know, he's going to, no matter what, he's going to win this fight. And so, I mean, he did lose fights through his career, but the majority of the time, even when he lost fights, he still won because he kept that spirit going. And, you know, he was, he was winning. And I said, wow, man, I got to use this. And so when I first start making, when I get back to Michigan, at first I wasn't going to go come back online at all. I was just like, man, whatever, forget the internet, forget this stuff, you know. Then I said, wait a minute. We can't end it here. There has to be like a Jamil Rawls 
beating gang stalking. You know what I mean? It, it's like, uh-uh, gang stalking is not going to keep me off online. And so that's what I did. I put Muhammad Ali on there with myself. And then after doing that, he died. Once I, I was putting him in my videos for like two weeks, two, three weeks at the most. And then out of nowhere, he dies. And the most fascinating thing is on the day he died, my, I was talking to my mother. I was saying, yeah, you know what? I was watching a lot of Muhammad Ali. He's fascinating, you know. And she was saying, well, what did he do when he quit fighting? I said, well, you know, he, he helped a lot of children's organizations and help children in schools and all this stuff. And, um, and you know, the interesting thing about Muhammad Ali is, is I think the Nation of Islam bended him a little more than what was natural. Because I heard him talking a lot. Like, he, he, he spit, like, on some of his interviews, you hear him talking a lot uh, against, like, white people and stuff. But at the same time, he spent a lot of money on helping schools where the majority, sometimes the majority of the children in the school would not be black. They, they'd be white. And so I began to see, like, how the Nation of Islam was, was sort of using him. And the things he was saying were not really his own beliefs, necessarily, but they were beliefs that were, you like the, like the black versus white thing they were using. And so it made me take another... I mean, he's a real complex guy, you know? But anyhow, I was telling my mother all this stuff about the children's charities and stuff like that, and so... She uh she said there's a place in heaven for Muhammad Ali. I said he's not dead. Turned out he died that day, that same day she said that he died, and she did not know. She didn't know if he was alive or dead, and I didn't know. And the next day on the internet, I saw it. Somebody said rest in peace. Somebody said R.I.P. Ali on one of my videos. I'm like R.I.P. Ali. I'm like Ali's not dead. Then on the news it came out Ali died. He died right when it was at the splitting point. When I said I beat gang stalking, as soon as I said I beat gang stalking and I won, then he died. So it was like, it was meant for me to meet him at that early age. And then through, something was urging me, something told me, Jamil, put him in your videos, you got to use this. Then after I did that, then he died. So it was almost, it was completely meant to be. So I felt, I felt like he left me with something. Like it wasn't over. Like I met him as a child, but it wasn't over before he died, he still got to leave me with something. And so that's why I use him in my videos. So if people wonder about me and, and Muhammad Ali, that's the story. He, he helped me be gang stalking. Then the other part of the person that helped me be gang stalking is this young woman. Love of my fucking life, boy. She helped me beat it because if it wasn't for her, I would have had too much fear to come outside, I thought, you know, I thought, damn, what would she think of me? She saw me scared to die. And so that, so, that's part of that. But with Muhammad Ali, I just saw, like, the Thrill in Manila fight. That was, that was a tough fight with Joe Frazier. And, uh, the Rumble in the Jungle. I don't know what's my favorite, more favorite, Rumble in the Jungle or Thrill in Manila. I don't know which one I like the most. But then that's when I saw him on the jump. Then when I saw Muhammad Ali on the jump rope, I was I felt inspired from that too. I said, man, you know, I'm overweight. That jump rope's going to help me. And so the jump rope helped me. There's a lot of other people who inspired me. Not just Muhammad Ali. There's a lot of people who have inspired me. But uh, he was one of the, he, he was like a big major part of it. He was He was a gigantic part of it. You know, and now it's a different thing. Now, now I was listening to Muhammad Ali talk about fighting. Now I listen to him talk about God and see with me, I don't, I don't look at God. I, I listen to, I listen to whatever anybody can talk about God. If somebody's Christian, they talk about God. I listen. If somebody's Muslim, I listen. If somebody's Jewish, I, I listen. I'm open, you know, Buddhist or whatever. I'll listen. I'm not religious. So I don't have any limitations. I look at creation as encompassing all things, and all these different religions are different ways to, re to reach. But if somebody's a Christian, they say, "Hey, you have to have Jesus and all this stuff to get, to get there." I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't tell them that's not real. It is real. That's where they're at. So, you know. But uh, 
And if they say I'm wrong, I'm accepting of, of their view. But uh, so anyhow, Muhammad Ali, I listen to talk about God. I listen to talk about love. And it was, and then when I listened to talk, talk about all that, stuff, I was like, wow, man, this guy's interesting. You know, he has some interesting perspectives on the world. And so, you know, Muhammad Ali. Interesting guy, interesting guy. What I learned from him is like, if you're like fighting, your ability, and I'm not talking about physical, I'm not talking about, I'm not limiting this to a physical fight. I'm talking about just fighting anything in general, fighting gang stalking, you know, fighting, whatever you're fighting for. If you're fighting to try to manifest a lifestyle you want or something you want, it's not about the tools you have and the skills you have, it's about the passion you have. The, the more passion you have, that's how you're going to get what you want. If, if, the, if the other person doesn't have as much passion in you, they're not going to make it because they're going to have more doubt than you. The more passion you have means the more belief you have, and the more belief you have means the less doubt you have, and the less doubt you have, the more you're going to manifest what you want. I have very little doubt. In anything. If I want something, I have very little doubt. If I truly want something, that means it's right for me. I don't want things just to want things. I want things because I know that that's a part of my life. That this is something that I want in my life because this is who I am. Therefore, I must, I must, I'm going to have it because that's who I am. That's why I want things. And I, I have zero doubt in it. You know? So, that's a lot. I, I just learned a lot of stuff from watching people. Muhammad Ali turned out to be... One of the greatest people I've learned from, and a yeah, very interesting guy. Very interesting is, you know, he spoke at Harvard College, Harvard University, and he spoke at a lot of colleges, and, and he was a poet, and uh, <laughs> just an interesting guy.